In this tutorial, we're going to look at subpatching and abstraction. In the previous tutorial on subpatching, we created a subpatch containing a simple five harmonic additive synthesis algorithm, which you can see here. Uh, the MIDI note number and harmonic amplitudes uh, go into the subpatch here and here, uh, and here we get a complex tone out. The uh, insides of the subpatch look a little bit like this, uh, and we can see, uh, for example, the five cycle objects which create the five uh, harmonics. So now I'm going to make some modifications to this patch. I've just created three copies of the subpatch. To the first copy, you'll notice that I'm sending the original MIDI note. The second copy, however, is getting uh, the MIDI note number plus four, and the third copy is getting the MIDI note number plus seven. Uh, that means uh, that the uh, three subpatches together are going to play a major triad every time I play a note on the MIDI keyboard so that uh, I can demonstrate the patch like so by playing one note on the keyboard I actually get a major triad. Well so far so good uh, but let's suppose now that I want to change the contents of this sub patch uh, so that it creates six harmonics instead of five. I would go into the sub patch, unlock it, uh, add another cycle object by duplicating this section here, uh, make a few other changes to add another harmonic, and that's all the changes that I need. Fine, uh, except that if I now look inside this copy uh, of the subpatch, I'll find that this one still only has five cycle objects, and likewise this one. In order to have six harmonics in the overall sound, in other words, I would need to make the same changes three times over uh, in each of the copies of the subpatch, which is inefficient. What that tells us uh, is that subpatching using the patcher object like this is good for tidying up patches and encapsulating functionality into a single object, but it's not so useful if you then want to create multiple copies of the subpatch, because as we've just seen, uh, this creates a lot of work uh, if you then want to change the contents of the subpatch. If you do want to create a subpatch so that you can create multiple copies of it, there's a better way to do it. You need to create what is called an abstraction. Now, uh, if you already have a subpatch encapsulated inside uh, a patcher object like this, you can create an abstraction from it as follows. First of all, you need to open up the subpatch, go to the file menu, choose Save As from the file menu, and now you need to give the subpatch uh, a file name that has no spaces in it. It's very important that it has no spaces. Uh, I'm going to call this one JM Harmonics. What I'm going to do now is delete these patcher objects, create a new object, and 
as the object name, I'm going to type the file name of the abstraction that I just saved. In other words, I'm just going to create an object called JM harmonics. This will create a copy of our abstraction, which you can see here. Uh, note that this will only work if you have your abstraction uh, saved in the same folder as your main patch. If you don't, then you'll see an error in the Max window that says uh, no such object. If I uh, lock up and double click on the abstraction, we'll see its contents as before. Only this time, notice that it won't let me unlock and edit the abstraction. We'll come back to that presently. I can, however, still create three copies of the abstraction uh, and connect them up as I did previously. Now, uh, as before, let's say that I want to change my abstraction uh, so that it creates six harmonics instead of five. Well, we've already seen uh, that I can't unlock the abstraction to edit it. If I want to make that change, what I need to do is uh, open that abstraction as a separate file. So uh, I'm going to go and find where I've saved that. Uh, I can see the max patch called JM Harmonics here, which I'm going to open. Uh, once I've opened it, I now can unlock that file and make the uh, change necessary. And save it. Having made the changes to the abstraction, I can now return to the main patch where if I double click on these copies of the abstraction, I'll see that the changes that I've just made are uh, present in all three copies. Very occasionally you might find that changes that you make in that way don't uh, work straight away in your abstractions. If that's the case, then it can usually be solved by closing your main patch and reopening it. So to summarise the last two tutorials, uh, we've seen that multiple objects can be sub-patched in two ways. Uh, firstly, they can be encapsulated using the patcher object, as we've done here. Uh, or they can be turned into abstractions by saving the subpatch uh, with a file name uh, and then creating uh, an object that has the same name as that file. Uh, encapsulation is useful uh, if you only need one copy of the subpatch because it means that uh, you can unlock and edit the subpatch easily. Um, abstraction is a little bit more complicated, um, but is much more efficient if you want to make multiple copies of your sub-patch.